Well, welcome back, one and all. This is your host, ID Jester. We're going to continue our look at Fantasy Grounds, the virtual tabletop software that you can pick up on Steam. It does come preloaded with 3.5 edition Pathfinder and 4th edition. And hopefully, you watched last episode, we talked about how to actually get the 4th edition imported in. But I just wanted to load up. Just a little easy campaign here for 3.5 that was already pre-built into the software. Uh, just to give you an idea of exactly what rule sets and what information comes with the 3.5 and the Pathfinder edition. So of course we'll resize our window here. Uh, we go to library you will see um, for modules here you can see they have the basic rules, the magic items, the monsters and the spells. And uh, that'll be it. So uh, if we go into the basic rules, you can see, uh, okay, I'm going to want to look at feats here, and I want to find one for, uh, see what's, what's available for, hmm, spell. There we go. Um, oh, yeah, here's heightened spell. Boom. Click on it. Gives you all the information about it. Again, just like all the other, um, just like all of the other, built-in uh, modules so you can see spell mastery prerequisite wizard first level the benefit the normal if you want to look up uh, monsters obviously there's a monsters guide and you can see we have if I can click on this little button I'm not sure why they made that so small you can see I'm scrolling through the list plenty plenty of monsters for you to choose from I don't think all the 3.5 edition stuff is in here, obviously. Uh, just most of the open source stuff. Uh, but you can see quite a list of monsters. If you look at the spells here, uh, cleric spells, again, quite a huge list of spells. So a lot of information for you 3.5 edition players to be able to use this software. And of course, if you wanted to add a spell in, you could do that quickly and easily. You're going to just hit the Add button. Oh, no, that just expands or collapses. Oh, there we go. We can go say, all right, let's look at all of our third level spells. Uh, there is ways to add information in, of course. And next, we're going to look at the Pathfinder rule set and basically to show you an overview of what that looks like. Uh, but I got to reload it up, so I'll do that and I'll be right back. So here we are back, and as you can see, it looks very similar to 3.5 edition, but if we go to our library and our modules, you see we have the uh, Pathfinder, RPG, Basic Rules, Beastery, Magic Items, and Spells as well. So uh, again, if we go into the Basic Rules, Feats, looking for a specific feat, maybe improved Bull Rush. Um, let's see. Improved Bull Rush. Oh, there, there it is. Click on it. Gives us all the information we want to know about it. The benefits. The prerequisites. All the information out of the open source material. Skills. Same thing. Diplomacy. Um, we can take a look at what that does. Of course, expand the windows open. If you're checking rules or want to double check something, all the rules built into the actual game. And of course, what good RPG game would there be if we don't have any monsters to be able to put up against the bold adventurers? So let's look at, say, a... Oh, I don't know. Let's try something different. How about a gelatinous cube? Everybody loves to do. So we got all the information, the initiative, the challenge rating, defenses, of course there's a spills tab and another tab here. Um, if you need those tabs. Alright, so that's just a basic look of Pathfinder and the 3.5 edition. Obviously if you're going to use either one of those editions, almost everything you could possibly need to root for the rule set is included with that. And uh, hopefully you watched our last episode on 4th edition. In fact, I'm going to switch back to our 4th edition campaign so we can show you a few more features. So I'll be back in just a minute. 
Well, we're back with our fourth edition of Fantasy Grounds here. As you can see, we have our little story here. Again, you just get to the story. Um, let's look at some of the other options here. Here's a combat tracker we're going to be using for combat. It keeps track of all the characters, of course. The characters we have included right now are Hexblade Sherva that we created last episode. Um, and of course we have our hunter here who is a peerless hunter classes hunter there you go both of them are first level give all the information of course all their powers fourth edition again so just uh, keep that in mind for you 3.5 and pathfinder players out there it's very everything we do in fourth edition is going to be very similar to um, how you set things up and how things interact and how things work uh, so anyways, uh, this is 4th edition, and uh, there's the characters. So we have the combat tracker. We have, uh, what is this, the party sheet. So uh, we're going to drop PCs here to add them to the party sheet. So, for example, we can add that and add that. There we go. So DM has a quick way to look at um, exactly their information, their skills, inventory, XP, other, whatever. Lots of different information there at a quick little glance. Uh, the reason I've kept this over to the left hand side is um, I'm going to show you something else here in a little bit so I wanted to uh, show you that. Uh, so that is the party tracker here. We have a skill challenges tracker. We also have a options, so this is going to be the options you're going to choose to how things interact on the screen. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Tables that you can create, uh, calendars, you can change the lighting as we looked at last time. Uh, we also have a paint scheme, and this is really cool for the color of the dice that you want. Each player can have their own color for their own dice. So, for example, if we want to have a nice bright goo, oh my gosh, that's kind of a little too bright for our dice there. And, of course, then you can choose whether to have black or white uh, numbers on the dice. So, if we're going to have something really bright, probably have a nice black color for the dice. That's awesome. Um, here we have any modifiers that are going to be included in any kind of attacks. Um, and we'll show you that later on and of course any effects that are currently going on so let's go back in and just look at our story and and just to see show you what we're talking about here and um, one of the things I mentioned about fantasy grounds is the fact that it it can interact really well with your DDI fourth edition account and be able to use that information um, that you can input into so for example let's look at let's say um, we have uh, let me show you here I thought I already had this set up but I guess not um, <laughs> we're looking at dungeon magazine there we go um, do 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 So maybe we're looking at Dungeon Magazine number 218 here, and we can look through it and say, um, well, let's see here. Here's a D&D &D adventure, comes to six pre eh, maybe not. Let's look at this one. Maybe this will give us a better option here. Looking for, okay, here we go. Rats in the cell, underseller. So level first to second. Oh, that sounds interesting. That's what my players are. We can read through the campaign. We can say, oh, yeah, cool. Excellent. All right. Okay. All right. And maybe we want to set this up uh, as part of our dungeon campaign. So obviously what I can do is I can click on this map and I can save the image. And we're going to save it to our desktop here. And we're just going to call this Dungeon 217A. And we're going to save it as a JPEG file. And we're going to hit save. And you'll see on our, our desktop here, there's our file. Just double click it to show you. And um, let's just minimize that, get it out of the way. So all we have to do is go to our images here. We can say, okay, we want to include this in our images. So we just click and drag it and hold our button. 
And voila, there is our map with a link to it. So there it is. And of course I can zoom in and out by using my scroll button. And I can actually move around the map if I'm zoomed in by using this little button down here. It kind of lets me zoom around the different areas. Um, this probably isn't the best example for a good encounter, but um, I'm just showing you basically. I, once it's in there, I can actually, oops, I can actually right click it and edit it, and I can call it, um, uh, let's see, Bandit Underground Camp uh, Cavern. There we go. Let's make that a little wider. There we go. So anytime I want, I can now link to that just by hitting the button, and there it comes up. There it is. Quickly and easily, everything links back and forth together. So if I have a nice, bright, caverned um, uh, campaign storyline going on here, I can enter text here. And so what I can do here is not choose that. I can choose the PDF. Oh, yeah, see, I did have the other one ready to go. Ah, ah there, there it is. See, I was smarter than the average bear. So, yeah, may, maybe this is a better example. Anyways, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we're looking through here. Here, oh, here we go. Dark Legacy of Edwald. D&D Adventure for characters level 1 to 3. Oh, good. So, a lot of information I want to add to my existing campaign here. So what I'm going to do is add an item here, create an item. We're going to call this, the story is going to be, um, what the heck was this called? Dark Legacy of Eswald. All right. We're going to call this All right, slide over. There you go. Dark Evard. There we go. In fact, we should probably make this the storyline there. There we go. Alright, so uh, so I could put the information in there. Just copy and paste. Copy and paste. There we go. And of course, we can put a bunch of room in there. Now, what do we need to do about this? Well, looks like we're going to have uh, three sessions, it looks like. Preparing for play. Session, uh, several sessions. Make this a little bigger so it's easier to read. Session one. Okay, so we're going to have session one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, cool. So we'll just put in se session one, and what we'll do is we'll make this a uh, heading session one, and in session one we have the background, right? Yes, we have the background information the DM needs to know. Oops, I keep clicking on this. I mean to click on this. There we go. So the background. So we're just going to copy this text. Copy. And we're going to go into our notes, and we're going to add a note, and we're going to call this um, <laughs> Dark Legacy uh, Session 1 Background. There we go. And then we're going to click to enter text, and all we have to do is paste the text in there, right? So we're doing that. And of course, you can resize these windows if it's easier for you uh, to do it that way. You can actually uh, change the formatting so it's all easy to see. Sure. So to do, I'm just. Uh, I'm sure we'll start a new paragraph there. That sounds like a good one. Good spot. Good time to do it. And there you go. So we got session number one background uh, for our Dark Legacy. 
So all I have to do now is go into background here and I will make this a link and you'll see it pops up the little box. All I have to do is drag this over, put that in there, I close that window, close the windows. So now when I'm ready to get ready to run this adventure, the Dark Legacy of Edwald. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, so adventure one to three, sure. All right, session one. Let's look at the background. Okay, good. Now let's look at. Again, wrong button. Um, <laughs> and of course, you can do this however you want. Um. <laughs> Gargoyles adorn the inn, come to life, and attack. Ah, nice. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to need a map, right? So let's look at our map here quickly. Kind of show you what we're doing here. Summary, yep. Okay, there's our little town map if we wanted to have that. We just save the images. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, dark Legacy Town Map. Sure, save. All right, should save it to our desktop. We'll import there in a minute. Oh, the old owl. Okay, let's look. Um, when the players are ready, let's yeah, we'll just save that up. Oh, here's the end right here. So importantly, um, for PDF files, you can see how we have the DM information here on this show you where they're going to start and where the players are going to be and we obviously don't want to give the players the information so fortunately for us when we click this and we save it if we save it as a JPEG we're going to call this the old owl tavern there we go and we hit the save button, we will, of course, look at our map, and voila! That's because Wizard of the Coast is smart enough to actually say, hmm, what can we do to make this easier for our players? And what they do is actually layer the PDF, so the map is in the background layer, and then the foreground layer will have the information. So we need three animated gargoyles, two shadow stalkers. Yes, all right. So the next thing we need to do is add those creatures. So we want animated gargoyles. So, well, first things first, let's get a map. Um, the old owl tavern map, right? And so what we want to do is we want to just highlight this today thank you there we go and we want to make that a, a link right and so we want to add that map to our images here let's drag that over from our desktop there it is and all we have to do is click on this and drag it down there and close that window again and now when we click on that voila look at what we have we have a nice tavern map that we can use for our players. Now of course we need some monsters. Yes, yes we do. So we will come back to you map just in a minute and we'll call this the um, in encounter. Alright, so we'll call this the in encounter. So we're just going to build us an NPC and you see up here at the top encounters and we're going to create a new encounter. We're going to call this new encounter the old owl in encounter. Yay for us. All right, right now we have nothing. We got nothing, we got nothing. All we have to do, three animated gargoyles. So with our import of all of our fourth edition stuff from the DDI, we can go to our library and the player dungeon master's guide look for monsters uh... T -t monsters by name Sh sure we can do a search for g-a-r-g-o-y-l-e 
Alright, gargoyle. We're looking for what kind of gargoyle here? Three animated gargoyles. Oops. Well, let's see. Do we have animated gargoyles here? Mm-hmm. Let's take a look. It's a level one skirmisher. Probably missing it. Let's try an I am A T D animated. Nope, I don't see it on the list. Maybe I need to look at this section. And I am Nope, oh, doesn't look like it's imported this, probably because it's from a PDF file, so that's fine. We'll just whatever. Gargoyle. Gee. Mm, let's see what this one is. Oh, 115 worker, probably a little bit too powerful for us. Mm -hmm. Oh, way too powerful. Well, well, well. We could, of course, add the monster in ourselves. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it matters just looking to see if they have that imported or not mm, doesn't look like it well that's kind of a bummer oh well let's see if they have shadow stalkers then we can add some extra shadow stalkers or something shadow stalker there's the shadow stalkers are there level three worker is that right um, Yep, level 3 worker. Sure why this one didn't get added in. But we will add that in really quickly here, I think. Um, hmm, hmm. So we've got a Shadow Stalker, right? So all we have to do then is we can just close that out, then close that, we can close this. And uh, we're going to add these guys to the encounter by. There we go, Shadow Stalkers. Um, how many do we need? Two? Okay, let's come here. Two. See right now it doesn't have any tokens whatsoever, so we're going to come down here to tokens. I should mention tokens, uh, there's just some generic, few generic tokens that come with the game. So you might want to download some tokens. There are ways to download tokens. Some mini tokens that um, you can use here. You can see that I have did that and was able to get all these um, so let's look for Gar. Oh no, we're looking for Shadow Stalker. Nope, Shadow. Okay, so let's see what we got. We can, of course, zoom in. Um, this Shadow Demon. That doesn't sound too bad. Mm -hmm. Well, let's show you something else then, because we don't have a Shadow Stalker. So let's assume, all right, I'm done clicking on that button. Let's just get rid of it. Let's just go to Google Shadow Stalker D and D. All right, so we'll go there. We'll go to images. Oh, look at that. Looks nice. What are we actually looking for? Does it have a picture of it? Mm, shadow stalkers. What are you? Medium shadow humanoid. Okay, that looks good. Something shadowy. Shadow creature. That's not too bad. Mm. Uh, shadowy. Something shadowier than that, maybe, if we could find a shadow. Let's see, what's this? Okay. That's not too bad. Let's see what else we got here. Ooh, that's I like that. So we just click on Shadow Demon and we're gonna view the image. Alright, so we got that. I'm not gonna take my little token tool that I have downloaded from the internet. Token tool, just do a search for it, you'll be able to get it yourself. I am going to I use uh, for my group, I use a circle for um, NPCs and monsters and everything and I use the gold one for oops not that one but a different 
gold one for the PC, so it's a little easier for them to see. So we're going to use shadow. I'm going to do 256 <coughs> by 256. I'm just going to do the screen capture, so I can capture this on my screen here. Yeah, something like that. That's good. Just hit enter, and you'll notice it'll put it here. Then I can resize it by just hitting these buttons here. Maybe a little bit smaller. I can move this around. Maybe a little bit larger. We don't need that much of a background. Something like that. Cool. I go file. I go save token. Uh, for right now, what I'm going to do is simply put this on my desktop. We're going to call this Shadow Stalker. And we're going to hit save, right? All right, so now that we've created a nice Shadow Stalker token, what do we do with that? Well, I'm done with that for right now. I'll just minimize that in case we need that. So what all I have to do here is go back to my tokens, and I'm going to click on these buttons down here at the bottom that say GM, Shared, or Modules. So GM or just tokens the GM will have access to. You can put Shared if you want to share tokens for your players. And modules, I'm assuming, will be for different token modules that you can download. Uh, for me, I'm just going to go to GM. It's going to bring up the folder. And all I'm going to do here is take my little Shadow Stalker and drag it into that folder. So that way, I will have access to it. Now, when I do Shadow Stalker, you see what comes up. Boom! There it is. And so I just drag that over and put it there. And you notice it'll put two of those things. And now I have this Shadow Stalker token I could use forever and ever. All right, so we have some Shadow Stalkers. We're building our encounter. Now we need to add those animated gargoyles. Hmm. So what, oh, what can we do about that? What, oh, what can we do about that? Mm, let's just see if we could do a search of everything. No? Okay. Um, well, that's because we're monsters. No, we have to be in this specific category. All right, that's fine. Um, those who old... Old style, mm, let's just go to all, I guess. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I was taking a break there for a second, and, um, well, I was going to create a brand new NPC called uh, Animated Gargoyles, um, which you basically just go in and you just yeah, start inputting the information. Um, again, you can see it's not too hard. Um, just basically what I was doing was just taking the information from the gargoyle here and just adding it in here so um, powers here we have a claw at will here new attack uh, damage and all the information about that plus 2d6 uh, plus five. Let's see if I can get that to actually. The target can't make opportunity checks. Yeah, anyways, um, so you just put input the creature. Yada yada yada. Um, so actually, what I ended up doing was just um, go into the compendium to see if I could find the creature. I can't find it in the compendium either, so that's why I didn't download because it's not actually in the compendium. So I was just like, okay, well, let's find another level one. Um, what is this? A skirmisher, level one skirmisher. So I looked at this a tainted bat, which sounds like pretty much uh, like a gargoyle here. So maybe we'll use the tainted bat, and that way tainted bat instead of having to actually create one. So let's see if we have the old tainted bat in our okay. And nope. Cross you off, cross you off. And do 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 where are we? Uh, library Dungeon Master Monsters. 
Let's look for bats. Tainted bats. There we are. All right, they're already inputted in the system. They're already ready to go. Most of the, most of them should. So you shouldn't have an issue with that. Anyways, we're going to add uh, some tainted bats to our little encounter here that we're setting up. So uh, we can just drag them over. Oops, drag them over. And of course, we want uh, what are the three of them? Three of them guys? Yeah, three of them. Okay, good. Um, oops, that was a street encounter. We don't need that open. Just trying to clear the desktop up a little bit here. Make it a little easier for you guys to see what's going on. Now, of course, we don't have any icon for it, so we will look for a bat. Alright, so we have a dire bat. Bat familiar. Fire bat. Shadow hunter belt. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We're going to use that one. All right, so we have our uh, little encounter started up there. Um, close our tokens here. Close our tainted bat. There we go. All right, so what I'm going to do is actually just take this screen here. I'm going to move it on my other uh, computer screen. So you won't be able to actually see it, but you won't need to see what I'm doing for this. Basically, all right, here's our shadow hunters. Good, good, good. So we're going to go back to our images here, and we're going to look at our Owl Tavern. There we go. So based upon our information here, we have a tainted bat that is going to be positioned here. Whoa, it's kind of big. You can see that, right? And I can rotate it. That's cool. One of the cool things you can do in this program is actually, let's scroll up a little bit, and we can just zoom in the map, and you notice the icon's not going to change size. Actually, before I do this, let's uh, delete this token first. So the first thing you should do with your maps is to kind of get the grid to work with them. You can see there's an outline already on the grid, but what we want to do is we want to have a grid here so that way... Hello, what are you doing to me, really? That's horrible. Horrible. I say horrible. Let's try one more time, dude. Alright, set grid. So, really? Nope, that's not very good either. Should be able to get this set pretty easily. Easily 28, 29, I think is what I want to get to. Nope, probably should have stayed at 28. Alright, try one more time here. Takes a little bit of practice. Um, yeah, that's not what we want either. Well, I must be looking at a, like a bad section of the map or something. Let's try a different section. Something a little easier. Alright. Yep, it's not going to work, but you can adjust it up and down. You can make it bigger or smaller. You can see there I am moving it probably there. Yeah, that's see if that's the right size there. Anywho. Alright, so what we're going to do here now is we're going to add our bats. So you can see I can take the bat and it's going to be right here. And you can see now that I put the grid on there, it'll make it a little easier to see. We're going to drag that over there. There we go. And actually what we'll do is we'll zoom in a little bit closer. And then what we can do is lock the token size. So no matter how I zoom the map, the token will stay the same size compared to the map. Looks like our grid's a little bit off, but eh, that's alright for just demonstration purposes. It's fine. Alright, we have another bat over here. And we have another bat down here. 
All right, and then we have our shadow stalkers. Uh, one will be here, and the other one will be over there. There we go. And you can see that as I zoom in and out, it keeps the uh, formatting of the icons the right size. It's a little easier to see the actual tokens, so of course I could just make me a bat token, which I might do because I don't like the token that's out there, because I'm pretty specific about what I like. Alright, so we're going to do D&D bat. Search, let's go. Go, go, go. While that's loading, we'll go ahead and bring up our token tool. And switch it to our silver. Of course, I could have just kept that open, which would have been easier. All right, so... Ooh, lots of good choices right off the bat. Hmm. Hmm, what do I want? Kind of like this one, actually. We'll view the image. If it'll allow us. Maybe. Come on. Are you going to let me see it or not? Just make up your mind. Cool. Thanks. Um, Alright, so same thing. We're just going to use our token tool. Capture the screen. Just adjust where we're going to... Have to move this out of the way first. Screen capture. Thank you. Um, Something like... There we go, that's cool. Just hit enter. Whoa. Where did you come from? Seriously. Get out of the way. Alright, now just resize it. Made it a little bigger here. Get a nice. So this uh, does like a big. Um, up and down, bigger and smaller, and this does like a smaller up and down. Um, sure. And again, save token. Painted bats. I'll just save that to our desktop. Save it. There we go. Just minimize that this time. So, um, Alright, so what I need to do is actually get rid of these tokens. Because I don't like you. There we go. Uh, so now what we have to do is actually go back into our encounter. NPCs, encounters. There we go. Alright, so what we need to do is go to our tokens. GM. Pop up this screen on my other window. Drag our tainted bat over. Oh, I can't do that because... It's still loaded in there. <coughs> gotcha. Alright, let's drag that over. There we go. Now we can do a search for tainted bat. There we go. <coughs> We're going to drag that icon onto there. There we go. Now, oops, get out of there. So we have our shadow stalkers. All right, let's put set this up really quickly again. Um, you are over here. There you go. You are over here. You are over here. You are right there. And you are right here. There. Good. So, um, once we have that set up on our map, and we're ready to go, um, what can happen is, let's bring our characters out here. Bloop, bloop. Hello. Oh, that's because we don't have an icon. Duh. Alright, so we're going to add a couple icons here. Hexblade. Let's see, do we have a Hexblade? 
We do have a hex blade. Hmm. We don't have a female hex blade, but um, yeah, it's not going to matter. Just for example purposes. Yes. Can you go there? No. No. You have to go here. There we go. We said uh, select a portrait. That's fine. Um, as you can see, I don't have very many portraits yet. I'm uh, sure. Let's just select that one. Zara. Um, choose that. And for, of course, you'd have this set up. Once you set it up, you're good to go. Just, oh, no, we don't want that icon. That looks ugly. Ug oh, we don't want that either. I kind of like my token tokens. So, what do we have? Let's zoom in a little bit here and see what we have here. Of course we could make one really quickly, but we've done that a couple times, so I'm not going to show you again and take the time to do that. Um, <laughs> let's just find something here. Of course I don't have that many females downloaded right now. Uh, sure, let's do this one. That one looks good. Yes, there we go. Alright, so now... And goes you out. Bring the characters there, and um, you know what? I don't like her token again. Um, let's just give her something really quickly here too. Sure. Boom. There we go. Bring her on the screen, and of course, the players would have access to their own characters. Now the players are going to start, say, over here, when they come down the stairs, to find out what all the noise is. And once we go to the combat tracker, we can simply <coughs> go in and share this screen. So let's show you that um, really quickly here, to show you what we're talking about. Let's go load up Fantasy Grounds again. And in this case, it's just going to load the introductory. Okay. Yes, I know it's already running. Shouldn't have a problem loading again. Let's see. Yeah. Shouldn't do that. I haven't had that issue come up. So, yeah. Should be able to launch it again. Oh my gosh, seriously. What did I do? Um, <laughs> well, I'm thinking. I'm sure there's a reason why that came up like that. I've used... To, I had loaded this up several times without having an issue with that. I don't have a second copy up anywhere, do I? I don't think so. No. Maybe it's my recording software that's saying, hey, you already got a copy up. I don't know. But anyways, um, so the players are in there, and you're going along with your story here. We're looking at our Nope. Hill Chapter 1. Yep, there we go. So we go to their encounter map. Nope, wrong one. Street encounter, that's a street encounter. Where is my counter I'm building? Story. Here, oh, there it is. Alright, so, oh, the end encounter. That's why we are having issues. Let's look and get our encounter 
and the old inning counter. There we go. Drag that over there. So now all we have to do is when the combat tracker, you can see the characters are automatically assigned in the combat tracker. So what I have to do simply is drag in the old in encounter and you will notice as soon as I do that it adds all of the creatures to the combat uh, tracker. But uh, I can close that out here to kind of make things a little easier for you guys to see. Now you can see um, that they're all grayed out, or red. They're red, but they're kind of grayed out. In fact, I really wish I could log in as the player to show you, and you should be able to. Just trying to figure out why that is all of a sudden not working. There we go. Uh, join the game. So we're going to click on join game and you can put your player name in here and in this case we're going to log in as Zara and uh, or your you know you can put whatever you want in there you can put your real name whatever your DM tells you to do host name you would put in the IP address of whoever you're connecting to but in this case uh, because we're playing in a local game we're just going to put in localhost and we're going to click on start. So we'll get to show you what this looks like. So it's connecting, trying to find the game. And when you log in, sometime today, there you go, you will see all the characters that are not already chosen by another player. So if I log in and somebody had already chosen Zara then she wouldn't show up on the list uh, since I'm the first one to log in I'm going to click on her and I will be assigned her and you will notice on the DM screen over here you see that somebody logged in and has taken that character so you can see the player's screen very very similar to the DM screen other than I've got no map I've got no nothing so the DM what they need to do is simply share this screen so we go to sharing and we share the, the screen and wow look at that so the player now sees the let's remove this token we don't need that token I like to keep things organized because people will be like well what's that doing there so th as the players you can see this is the player view here now I'm in the inn and uh, this is my character here. If I bring up my character sheet, you can see all my information. Oh, I'm actually the front character. Okay. So this is my character right here. And I can simply click on it to, uh, sh you know, move it or whatever. But before I do that, um, the DM is going to reveal the monster. So as, um, as I just showed you, when... Uh, <clears throat> when the characters come down here for this encounter I can load up the map We're ready to go I just go to the encounter and add the encounter in and it will automatically roll initiative for them and put them in initiative order but of course it will uh, of course it will um, show all of the NPCs or monsters in this case as not visible I can individually come in and say, okay, you guys can see the Tainted Bat number three, so I'll make that one visible. You can see Tainted Bat number two, and you can see Tainted Bat number one from where you're at, so I'll make those currently visible. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can actually see um, there are different settings that you can choose for your icons, and we'll just go in the Settings tab here. Nope. Yes, I can't actually change the settings when I got a player logged in. That's right. So I can't actually show you that when a player is logged in. So we'll get to these settings later. But basically, you can have a little dot for health. You can have like a little bar that'll show up next to their token, uh, showing their health. 
or uh, you can have it so that nothing shows up but they can mouse over it and see it or you can have them so nothing and we'll look at that uh, later on but uh, so it's my turn to roll initiative here so what I will do is simply come over to my character sheet and um, I'm actually just going to put the combat tracker on my other screen for a minute so it's just out of the way you can see how valuable having that other information or that other uh, uh, ability to move things aside are very valuable uh, so one thing I did want to show you is you can see each of these creatures has a little number next to it so I can actually hit control and my little mouse button and I can fine-tune them if I want them a little smaller or a little bigger so yeah points point eight is pretty good maybe we'll make them a little bit smaller because they're bats we'll just make them point seven that's fine there we go so you can fine-tune the size really nice option now I'll move that out of the way alright so for the character here I am going to simply come to my sheet here find my initiative which is right here and I can double click it and it'll roll it and it'll automatically add me to the combat tracker let's bring that back for a second so initiative double click you see the dice is being rolled uh, actually I wanted to do that on the player screen let's try that again so here's my player uh, he can of course adjust his map size as well to keep things manageable zoom out a little bit so he sees what's going on of course you can do the same thing scroll around look whatever you can zoom in <coughs> in this case um, I'm going to bring up my character sheet and a roll initiative just double click and you can see my dice are black in this case and in fact each character portrait here will have a little icon next to their um, what color they are in fact we will change the color so you can see it a little easier there we go and we're going to change them to white numbers yep and you can see now we got a little red dot over there excellent options so everybody can have their own color dice you can see the dice tower here being you or the dice roller here um, and so I've put myself into initiative let's see where that puts us so I'm at 11 so I'm still going last here and of course the other player would roll for their initiative uh, we could just as the DM we could just run her for a little bit and double click her there we go so she's in the initiative now and so the initiative order has been set um, so simply we will talk about combat here and show you a nice bit of combat for the next episode so things are getting exciting folks stay with us and um, we'll see you next time so thanks so much for watching